Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to one of our live TriMec Tech Tips. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the TriMec Marketing Content, you've probably already seen a few of our video tech tips before. Uh, but during this special month of TriMec Tech Talks, we're bringing you live video tech tips to show you what's new in SolidWorks 2021. Today, I'm going to be showing you some new content in SolidWorks Composer. We have some really good stuff for you. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Coolest thing that we can now do in SolidWorks Composer with SolidWorks documents is we can actually bring in multiple configurations. If we go and look at this SolidWorks assembly here, uh, it's always a good idea to check your import settings. But here on the SolidWorks side, you'll see that we can now bring in multiple configurations. So for this assembly, we actually have a few different brush options that we can uh, utilize within this assembly. So now in Composer, I can actually go and select all those configurations at once and bring those into my SOLIDWORKS Composer document. One thing you'll notice here on the left, once this thing actually converts uh, and opens up in Composer, is that one new thing we had in SOLIDWORKS 2020 was the ability to import exploded views from a SOLIDWORKS assembly. So that was one of the really cool things we had back in 2020. Another nice thing they added was the ability to uh, save out your video content to more formats than ever before. That was sort of a, a weak point on Composer, but in 2020, they added additional formats such as MP4 and MKV formats. Um, so really allowing you to take that content and upload that to some of the more popular platforms like YouTube. If you're familiar with YouTube, you know that MP4 is their, their native format. So the ability to output that is really nice. Uh, you'll see here, Composer is actually utilizing SOLIDWORKS to go through and convert this assembly file, uh, which is going to help it bring in not only those configurations that we talked about, but those exploded views. And also another thing that we could bring in uh, in 2020 is any predefined named view. So all those are now able to be utilized within SOLIDWORKS Composer 2020. Uh, so we'll give this just another couple moments here to go through and do its conversion. Uh, sometimes it, it can take a moment, so I apologize for that. Um, but while you're hanging out with me, I do want to mention that we do have some more of these video tech tips, as well as webinars coming up uh, the rest of this month of October, showing you what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2021, uh, what's new with our 3D experience platform, a lot of really good content. In fact, if you tune in tomorrow at 2 p.m., you'll see that I'm going to be uh, presenting a webinar for engineering insights going into uh, some tips and tricks for SOLIDWORKS assemblies. Uh, so that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Do make sure you sign up for that. I'd love to see all of you there in that webinar as well. And then this, this coming Friday uh, at 11 a.m., same time as today, I'm actually going to be presenting uh, another live video tech tip showing you how to deal with content in SOLIDWORKS Composer as well as SOLIDWORKS Visualize when something like a design change comes up. So we'll see how we can actually handle that. So that, again, was this Friday at 11 a.m. Do make sure you, you tune in for that one as well. Again, I'd love to see everybody there, all of your, uh, <laughs> your virtual smiling faces, even though I can't really see you. <laughs> um, but here we go. We can see that we've now brought in our SOLIDWORKS assembly. And if we go over to our views tab, you can see what I was talking about, where it actually has all of those exploded views that are now brought in uh, for this particular assembly. Uh, for this assembly, though, maybe I'd like to do something like show all the different brush options that we have with those multiple configurations. Uh, so if we go to our new configurations tab here, you can see that we do actually have the ability to switch between all of these. So for instance, let's go to our brush coil option right here. Um, and we can see that that, that coil kind of changed on the inside there. So if I want, I can go ahead and select that particular sub-assembly. If you're not familiar with uh, SOLIDWORKS Composer and some of the selections, you can actually step up through your, your assembly hierarchy to a sub-assembly just by hitting the left arrow on your keyboard. So once I have that selected, we can go ahead and just show that selection and hide everything else. Um, right now, you can see it might be a little bit busy with the, the floor there. Um, but fortunately, in SOLIDWORKS Composer, we do have the ability to turn things like that on and off. So we'll just go ahead and disable that ground right there and then maybe change our rendering style as well. In Composer, we do have a lot of really nice uh, rendering styles that we can choose from, whether it's smooth or smooth with outline, maybe a silhouette rendering style. Uh, for this particular one, I happen to like the flat technical because it gives it more of that sort of illustration look that I'm trying to go for uh, for this particular view. Uh, once I have that and I'm satisfied with it, again, we'll just go and capture a new view here. 
and that will show our brush coil option uh, for this particular subassembly. Go ahead and add a name to the view there. And then if I wanna go ahead and get some additional ones here, it's really just a matter of going back to my configuration tree and maybe changing this to those different configurations. We'll use the same method of just stepping up through the assembly hierarchy. We'll go ahead and show that selection. Again, maybe I wanna turn off my, my ground here and then just capture that new view once again. So it really allows me to get uh, those, those multiple options that I can then show in whether, whatever sort of content I'm creating. For instance here, maybe I'm really trying to highlight this new option I have here with this rubber and the 3D print. We'll just go ahead and show that only. We'll turn off our ground again. And again, I can go ahead and capture that new view, really allowing me to kind of showcase those different configurations uh, that I wanna use within my Composer document. In the past, what I would have to do with this is maybe create multiple composer documents and then output those images uh, to, to different places if I wanted to show those different configuration options. Uh, now in 2021 though, that we can use all these different configurations at once, it allows me to create some pretty, pretty unique stuff. Um, so let's go here and take a look at one of the finished uh, versions I had uh, for this particular sub-assembly. And if we browse over to that, um, you'll see here that I do have these multiple views on the left-hand side here. So I've actually got um, a whole overview uh, view that I've captured that's showing the entire sub-assembly, as well as all of those different options that I have for that brush sub-assembly. If we turn off the designer mode within Composer, we can actually test these. So if we click on each of these individual views that I've listed here, you'll see that'll take us right to that particular option. So if you're planning on publishing this uh, as part of interactive content, this is a really good way to present these different options. It allows users to just simply go through and click on each one of them and see what all those individual options are. Um, if you're not familiar with how to do that, um, I'll give you guys a little tip here. Um, if you have a view such as this, this brush hub and bristle view here, if you just hold down the control key on your keyboard and drag and drop that over into your view, that will give you that linked view that you can then use within that interactive content. Um, one thing that you'll notice here, if I go back into designer mode and click on that view, that view actually has a, um, an event tied to it. In this case, a link event, where it's linking that particular thumbnail to a view that I have saved within this composer document. Um, so here you can see that's going to that brush and coil view. Little known fact, you can actually add these links to a number of different types of actors within SolidWorks Composer. So if we look at this coil label that I have here, this 2D text label, you'll see that I've actually copied and pasted that same link uh, to that label. So now, regardless of what the user clicks on there, whether it's the image itself or the actual label, that'll actually bring them um, to that particular view. So a really great way to kind of present that interactive content. Um, so you might be wondering, how do you get that to your users? In my opinion, the best way in the past has been uh, using SolidWorks Composer Player. That's a free application that anybody can download and it allows them to open up these native Composer documents and interact with them by selecting the different views, as well as clicking on these links that we have here uh, in this interactive content. Uh, a great new thing that we have for SolidWorks 2021 though, is the ability to actually integrate this interactive content with our new 3D experience platform. So if we go over to our uh, browser window here, you'll see I'm actually on my 3D experience dashboard. Um, here I have the same Composer document that we were looking before, but now I can actually view this right in my web browser on that 3D experience platform. So here I have that same assembly that we had before. Um, I can actually go through and pan this or, or rotate it. So I can view that dynamically right here within uh, my, my 3D uh, player view on the 3D experience platform. But in addition to that, you'll see it also supports um, this 3D interactive content. So if I go ahead and click on this coil view, it's going to take me right to that view, right within my 3D experience platform. Uh, in addition to that, another great way to sort of highlight this content is to add maybe an exploded view. If we go over to our rubber and 3D print view here, um, you'll see that on this page, I have actually added an exploded view. So not only can I go through and view this thing in its, its fully assembled state, but if I go ahead and click on this exploded view thumbnail here, that's going to show me that entire sub-assembly in this exploded view. So now not only can I see it in its assembled state, but I can also see it in its uh, exploded state. 
So I can identify all these different components and begin to understand how they all fit together. If you wanted to take this a step further, you'd probably want to go through and maybe add a parts list or a bill of materials to this. But again, you can view that right on that 3D experience platform now. So it really just takes that functionality of Composer and really steps it up to the next level in SOLIDWORKS 2021. That was all I had for today. Uh, I'd love for you guys to go ahead and type your comments within the comments section. I'll be answering those after today's live presentation. Uh, but anything you have a, a question of, just go ahead and, and type it in there. I'd love to address that. And again, please do sign up for our, our further webinars. Um, again, mine is coming up tomorrow, 2 p.m., Engineering Insight, Assemblies, Tips and Tricks. And then again on Friday at 11 a.m., another live video tech tip. We'll all be walking you through uh, updating your content in both SOLIDWORKS Composer and SOLIDWORKS Visualize to deal with design changes and really showing you how you can make your content creation a more parallel process, how you can create that in conjunction with the actual design itself. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Do check out our TriMec events page to view more of our TriMec Tech Talks for our 2021 What's New series. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.